day one of the July 98 seven-day retreat in spring water. A warm Sunday morning Are we here? The sound of an airplane or whatever motor is humming. Some birds, insects, the breathing, it's there, isn't it? Breathing. All kinds of physical sensations. <coughs> the soles of the feet, the hands, may be touching the body. The body touching the mat or chair. The sensations together with bird twittering and motor humming and breathing. Thoughts, are there thoughts? Lots of them, a few. The sound of wind in the trees, the leaves trembling. Are we here? From where does the listening arise? This moment of leaves in the wind, that's what we usually talk about in the first day, listening. Can there be a fresh listening, this moment of simply being here? Usually, we're not simply here. We're surrounded and filled with stuff. Our stuff. My worries. My expectations. The whole programming which sets the mind and body to listen in a certain way. I'm very worried about something right now, something happening home, at home, or projected in the future, something that may befall me, or my family, or the country, or the world. If there is great involvement with this, can there be listening to birds singing and leaves trembling and breathing presently? We're not saying, don't worry, just listen. But what is the state of the body-mind, this moment <coughs> of being here? Is there involvement in what I want to hear or would like to hear? Or a certain tension of what I don't want to hear, what I'm afraid she will say? Then there is not the ease of open listening here, no matter what is happening, inside or out. 
most of the time we're not at ease and open and undefended, vulnerable, if you will. Most of the time we're not. There's already a setup from past experiences. which prevents simple listening. And yet this setup, this setup from the past, my worries, my fears, my expectations, what I want, what I don't want, amazingly enough, it can come into view right now, this moment of attending. Is there expectation in the mind and body? Wanting to hear something? Is there imagery of Tony, what she is, what one has heard, what one wants her to be, or doesn't want her to be? Images in the mind about me and you, you and me, to just let it show itself, let it be seen and heard, with no reason to find fault, just sheer looking, sheer exposure of what is there, which, when seen without judgment, may open up to a fresh listening right now as the airplane is humming. Our training in listening from earliest childhood on has been a demand for listening, listen, pay attention, or else. You haven't listened to me, listen to me. And by being made to listen, threatened when we didn't listen, or punished, or rewarded when we did pay attention precisely to what somebody said, following it, obeying it, remembering it, being able to repeat it, repeat to the teacher what he or she asked us to listen to. In this kind of conditioning of our listening mode, in this kind of conditioning, the wholesome listening was shut out. Little children who are everywhere with their eyes and ears, easily distracted, we say, always looking at or attending to something new. No particular goal, except maybe to get something, to grab something, hold it in the little fists, but even that is dropped easily when something else comes up that's interesting. This sort of open attending gets trained out of us very early. And a directed listening and looking is trained and instilled, which is goal directed, is rewarded, or if insufficient, we're punished or reprimanded. Here, coming to a beautiful, open, light place, quite a few like-minded people. Maybe there is a possibility of discovering newly this childlike listening and attending 
without a purpose, just being here with what's there, with what presents itself inside and out. Letting it be, letting it go on its own, without any need to direct the show, which one may find to one's amazement is directing itself. Is there expectation in the mind? We've asked it freshly many times to not say, no, no, I don't expect anything. I come here without expectations. Or saying, yes, I understand. I shouldn't have this expecting mind. This is not the open way. The open way is without conclusions and opinions. It just reveals what is there. Not that it shouldn't be there, or denying that it is there, or justifying what's there. It's human nature. That's how we all are. All of that is not this present openness to, to discover this whole dyna dynamics of expectation, which controls and constricts our being most of the time, always or most of the time, expecting something, or wanting something, which is another form of expectation. So, rather than what is the usual habitual thing, moving with the expectation in fantasy, in imagination, and the whole body going along with what is imagined and expected and wanted. This, this organism is uh, a most faithful accompanist to the tunes of thought and imagination. It accompanies everything with some form of energy, some organ and gland and muscle participation in expecting something. So. For a moment, when the question arises, is there expectation going on right now, to stop, look, and listen freshly, and feel the hum of wanting and anticipating. Feel the hum, the motor of it, without blame or fault, finding or condemnation or justification. If the quick judgment arises, feel the sound of judgment within and how it blocks out simple looking. Because at the moment of judging, there is preoccupation with what we think and assume is right and wrong. And that preoccupation with the ideas of right and wrong block out the sounds and sights and sensations presently taking place. Is that too difficult to follow? first day of talk is often difficult. One may be very tired from the trip. It's not slept very well. So, we'll, we'll say the same things over and over, maybe a little bit in new ways, because there's no rote memory here operating, but we're looking together at this whole seemingly complex affair of listening, which can be so simple. A moment of simple being. Expectation that was there has been exposed. 
and in the exposing doesn't need to operate because it, it is seen that dwelling in expectation is a different way of being from just hereness, nowness, in touchness. Can you see that? The difference between thinking about tomorrow and what will happen to me or how the day will go. Dwelling in thought projections and peep, peep. Here, breathing. Physical sensations in this body. I had a feeling there was tiredness. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, I once was asked to, to give a talk at the San Francisco Zen Center. The very early days of having left the Zen Center. And one of the senior monks was sitting in the background and he was snoring. <laughs> I don't think he was trying to send a message, it was just, he was tired. Is it difficult just to be here? The energy being, the energy gathering and listening right now, not so much to what is said, remembering the words, but looking, open, attending. Usually it, it takes some kind of emergency for us to feel energy and that energy can act appropriately because the situation is seen for what is needed. There's amazing effect of emergency which people experience in natural catastrophes. Floods, droughts, earthquakes, fires. There's no extraneous stuff. Energy is needed to Pay attention right now and see what has to be done and doing it. And with the emergency over, do we go to sleep again? Or is a moment of inattention in itself a mini crisis? Because it is in moments of inattention that we do all the stupid or hurtful or harmful things that happen throughout this world. It all happens in inattention, involvement with ourselves at the cost of seeing the whole situation as it is. Living in videos about ourselves and each other rather than in direct touch with wind and heat and cold. And the movements of this amazing body-mind. It, it is not true that it just takes an emergency to feel energy. It happens this way, but it's not the only way to attend freshly. Are you here? This moment? Right now?
How quickly do thoughts arise? Can one watch it? Not I must watch it, but it's interesting to see what clouds the sky. Because here and there experiencing this freshness of being here, the openness and non-division, makes one wonder what happens when this is not there and why the closeness, the numbness. the endless dwelling in memories about what happened to us and worries about what will happen to us. People say, why this attraction with looping around about a possible future happening? Why this attraction? Why this preoccupation with is the question alive and real for one? This moment, if there is looping around the future, why? If that question arises, the looping around about the future is interrupted and one wonders why. And not to be seduced by the habitual tendency of the brain to look for an answer, an intellectual answer. It is because of this or it is because of that. That's our customary way of answering why questions. To think of an answer and the brain is infinitely resourceful to tap its files to find answers or to ask other people for answers. And yet there is a different way of asking why. Why this preoccupation with the future and the past? Not theoretically, but as it's happening, as one wakes up to it. Why? And not knowing the answer, but stopping, attending to the tremendous pull to go with what is habitual. Tremendous energy current flowing with the habits to discover that at a moment of asking why and maybe the next question will be does it have to be this way and one doesn't know but one is asking see tendency to go with habit, to think in a certain way. And then why? And to watch it, the strength and power. And then ask, does it have to be this way? Not it shouldn't be this way, but does it have to be like this? And listening quietly, inwardly. And there is Sound of leaves in the wind, isn't there? The birds calling and the breath in and out. In this there is no preoccupation for the past or future. There isn't even the present, that is just another thought. It's breathing and listening and being here and spotting the expectation and wondering why. Why every other moment expecting something different? Why? And not knowing the answer, just watching the pull of habit to expect something different the next moment. Why? Not always because of this and that and so forth. We're conditioned beings, that's human nature. Why and not knowing the answer? And therefore, attending freshly to something that's there, but we don't know why.
One topic we also take up in every first talk is that of authority. Creating authority, following authority, demanding authority, protesting authority. And we're wondering whether, whether any of this is necessary in the work of this moment of listening freshly. I've said all kinds of things so far. Were they said with authority? Believe me, I'm telling you the truth. This is what you got to remember and tell other people and bring up for yourself. It may be heard this way. At times there's a lot of energy and there's emphasis in talking. Which is or may be interpreted as an authority speaking. This is not what is really going on. There's just a, a sharing, an offering, an offering to look at something together. This whole thing of listening and narrowness of listening because there's expectation in the mind it's not a matter of authority saying this, but let us look at it. Is it really so? Can we discover it for ourselves? I'm not speaking from theory, but from watching moment to moment what goes on in this body-mind, which is a shared affair. The process and dynamics of expectation is the same no matter who you are or where you are. Same physical, neurological, physiological, and psychological ingredients, although the content may be different for each one of us. Each one of us expects a little bit something different. Sometimes not, sometimes it's very much the same. But I'm not talking about content, I'm talking about process. And not talking about it to become authoritarian and imposing views on people. Sometimes I get this feedback. You're just voicing your opinions. And why should I bother with your opinion? And there's nothing that I can do to I could say, well, it's not an opinion. But <laughs> and we're in argument. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. <laughs> so can can we listen without rejecting, even if something hits us as being wrong? Usually when we're hit, there is something that is resonating doesn't want to hear because there's something there that may have been addressed. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It's for each one of us to find out. And it can be found out. Resistance to listening. Is there resistance? Some fear? Maybe not right now, maybe another time. Any time resistance arises, can it be questioned, felt, exposed, wondered about? Does it have to be like this? Not, I shouldn't be resistant. We are bundles of resistance most of the time, aren't we? Not wanting this, being afraid of it, protecting against it. It's all right. There's nothing wrong with it. What needs to happen is let it be brought to light, let it be irradiated with attention and wondering why. Why this resistance? And does it have to be this way? 
and not knowing the answer, but beckoning to attend, to watch it freshly. Like as though it was a, a purely scientific experiment to watch resistance in myself. Not for gain, not for loss. For the sake of finding out what is true for human beings like you and me, resisting each other so much most of the time for millions of reasons. But what is the resistance itself? This barbed wire fence to feel it, to touch it, to acknowledge it, and to question it. And one may find to one's surprise and delight that questioning something innocently, purely, creates energy. The energy to look and listen and you. So what was said right now about resistance and questioning? Is there a feeling that authority is being created or perpetuated or demanded, imposed? Do you feel that way? And if you do, please bring it up in meetings, we'll look at it freshly. Because this is not, there's not any intention to impose anything upon, any, upon anybody. But to illuminate what rides us and drives us and makes us suffer and feel such separation from each other, such unnecessary separation and division. Can we bring it to light? Are we interested to watch, to discover it, to question it without any authority? Light shining on something in darkness is not authority, it's illumination. It need not be resisted or protested or accepted. We just learn as we go by ourselves. Somebody saying something may be helpful, but the seeing can only happen here for each one of us. No one can do it for someone else. As much as we would like it. So we seek out the presence of teachers and gurus, spiritual leaders. We want to get something from them. Get a transmission. How does it really work? When there is no division between you and me. We're, we're both seeing the same thing at the same time. The same energy that moves the trees and the sun and clouds and stars and yet is so still in its very depth. Just a few words before we end this. The question comes up a lot, well, if if you're not an authority, not a teacher or a guru or whatever, then what is our relationship with each other? We need to think in those terms, at least in the beginning. Can we 
me drop it right now at the beginning. Drop trying to define this relationship, which when we're really here, you and I at the same time, same energy, there's not even a question of relationship anymore, me to you. It's just whatever is here is present, alive. But if we need to think about, and there's nothing wrong with the mind wanting to represent to itself what is going on somewhat abstractly, abstracting from the directness of being together, can our relationship be one of friendship, sharing, respecting each other, respecting each other's quirks? By that I mean not me trying to change you and you not trying to change me, but first of all, let's find out about ourselves and each other in a new way. Fundamentally, there is no difference between us, except differences in conditioning, in cultural background, social background, all of those differences, which seem to amount to a lot, but fundamentally amount to nothing, if we're not identified and protective of it and assertive of it, or denying it and rejecting it. Just let it be. In vast, empty space. Vast, empty space in which True love and being together without division can flower. Not that we may not have differences of opinion, we do because we're differently conditioned, but to be light about it, not eat our way into these differences and hold on to them for, for dear life. So what, what am I right now? This one moment of listening without knowing. We will end here for today.